Hey YouTube, it is League Turnover today and it is Fossil Cup as one of the options. So we're going to go over what is Fossil Cup, we're going to go over the rankings, and we're going to go over teams that have worked. So I went through my playlist and I have a bunch of teams, some from the old background, some from the new background. Um, but it's funny because in each video, as we're going to go through the rankings in one second, I said in each video, I'm like, oh, there's only 10 to 15 Pokemon in this meta. There's only 10 to 15 Pokemon in this meta. And when you look at the rankings, there's only 10 to 15 Pokemon in this meta that matter. So... Fossil Cup, Water, Rock, and Steel. So right off the bat, you should be like, okay, Water's going to dominate, right? Because you have Rock, which is weak to Water, um, and then you have uh, Steel. So with some Water, you have like your Mud Boys, or they hit at least Neutral. And then Water, actually, not that Steel Pokemon will always throw Steel, but Water Resist, um, Steel, plus if you have like a Rock-type Pokemon, if you have like a Mud Boy, um, it's going to resist the rock as well. So water has a huge advantage, and it's not surprising given uh, uh, the typings. And then you look at the rankings, and hello, water. So there's only 20 Pokemon that really dominate the meta. Uh, there's only a couple Pokemon on here that are new, actually, as well, compared to the old list. So I'm going to actually just start with everything that's old on this list that you will see teams already built for. Um so Polyrath is actually newer. So Registeel at number two, Ferrothorn at four and five, Quagsire at seven, Ludicolo at eight. Um, Lantern's kind of oldish, kind of new at nine. Jelson at 11, Swampert at 12, Escav at 13, Lucario at 15, Pelipper at 16, Gastrodon at 17, already said Quagsire, and then Whiskash at 19. So those have all been in this meta already before. And basically, here's the reasons why. Registeel is your main steel. Um, again, resists rock neutral to water, and you just have two nukes, right? So if it's a pure water, you have that zap cannon um, nuke already hitting super effective. And then you have a focus blast that will one-shot rock. So you have insane coverage in this meta, two nukes, super fast charging lock-on. That's why it's so dominant. Ferrothorn is so high because this is a meta dominated by water. And there is, now with Kartana, like two grass Pokemon. Actually, there's three because Cradilly's on one of my teams. So there's like very, very limited grass Pokemon. Ferrothorn is one of the best. Having that steel typing, able, able to resist uh, the rock with the steel typing, but also the water with the grass typing, which makes it very, very deadly. It is on a lot of teams. Um, so Ferrothorn should be everywhere. Uh, Quagsire. And I'll cover kind of cover Swamper and Whiskash because they're all Mud Boys, right? Mud Boys have a huge advantage. Uh, you hit super effective against the Steels with your ground type moves, and you hit uh, you resist the Rock as well because you're a Mud Boy. So huge advantage for Quagsire, Swampert, and Whiskash. Notice that Quagsire is running Mud Bomb Stone Edge because um, in a meta with a ton of water Pokemon, you don't really need Aqua Tail. You need other coverage moves. So noticed Mud Bomb and Stone Edge on Quagsire. Ludicolo is in here as a water, but it's mostly used as grass. It's half water, half grass. But as you can see, Razor Leaf and Leaf Storm, two out of three are grass moves, and Ice Beam is the third move, right? So even though it's covered in blue here, it um, is mostly used as a grass, but it gets in as a water Pokemon. Um, Lantern. It's, I was looking at my teams and I don't think I have a Lantern on a team, which is very surprising because Lantern was kind of always decent. Um, and again, it's going to be one of the main electric Pokemon in this meta, bulky, so electric to deal with um, all these waters. I guess the drawback is there's a lot of Ferrothorns, a lot of Ferrothorns, and a lot of Mud Boys. So from that perspective, that's where it falters a bit. Jelsint, same sort of thing. It's a water Pokemon, but... Uh, it gets by because it's mostly being run as a ghost Pokemon. Kind of nice bulk. Polyrath and other fighters like Eskev and Lucario in this a lot. So uh, it's a nice answer to the fighters. And then I'll just cover Eskev and Lucario both in one because they're your main counter users, right? Counter users to deal with your Steels, Registeel, Ferrothorn, and a few others. And they do pretty neutral. Um, I mean, his super effective against Rock too. There's not, there's like very, 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 very little Rock for good reason. Um, so they hit very well in neutral matchups too against all the water. So pretty strong Pokemon. I expect to see a lot of those users. Pelipper is in here because um, it was one of the main ways 
to deal with some of these grass Pokemon, like Ferrothorn. Eh, not really, because they have Thunder. But uh, I think it was the, I think it was the main way to deal with the water Pokemon. Quite honestly, because the water Pokemon, Mud Boys, stuff like that, are gonna have a hard time against you unless they have like Stone Edge, like Quagsire. Uh, otherwise, you could just kind of spam the wing attacks and weather balls. Gastrodon uh, as a ground Pokemon, same thing, hitting super effective against the Steels with Mud Slap. Um, and then the Mud Boys are already covered. The new ones, Polyrath. Uh, I guess Community Day Polyrath is newer compared to when this was previously run. So, automatically with the Community Day counter, huge increase. Um, now, a water Pokemon with good bulk, with one of the best fast moves in the game, and hitting, having a generally neutral dynamic punch across the board, and then you still have your Icy Wind for your Flyers if you need coverage for that. So that's why it's really... Kurtana, I think you can now, if you did one of the uh, research tasks, can you have a Kartana below 1,500? Uh, it's just being used as a pure fast move damage Razor Leafer against water. That's that's it. That's its role. <laughs> so if you need a Razor Leafer, uh, it gets in because it's half steel. So that's why it's in here. So uh, if you just want a pure Razor Leafer to try and deal with all the water you're seeing, and you have a fit on one under 1500, that's how you use it. I guess the only other new thing on here is that uh, Shadow for Alligator is a 20. Again, for Alligator is amazing in the open, but when this meta is going to be so dominated by water Pokemon, it's a little tougher to use because your main Hydro Cannon, which is your strength, is resisted. Um, and notice the second move is Crunch, because again, if you're in a water dominated meta, there's no point of running a Ice Beam and Hydro when both will be resisted. So let's look at some old teams um, and then get to some new ones. So I think I built this core multiple times over these videos you're going to see. Swampert, Pelipper, it was the same thing. Swampert, um, only weak to grass. There was a couple grass, Fairthorn, Cradilly, stuff like that. So then you have Pelipper as one of the main flyers in this meta to deal with grass. Uh, you can also go with like, I think at this point, so I used back in the day, I used a flyer. I think you can also justify using a steel to a certain extent. So if you want just a pure, like I'm trying to balance off my grass weakness, steel makes sense. Why? Pelipper makes a little more sense is because you're going to have Pokemon like um, Polyrath, which as a counter user and water will just outpace you and just beat you there. So having something for Polyrath, that's why I think the Flyer Swampert combo work just to cover those weaknesses. And then the third I used was Lucario. Um, and again, I think that the counter users have a ton of play in this meta because of Registeel and Ferrothorn. Those two will be everywhere in this meta. So having a counter user on your team, you can use a new uh, fast move on that. This one was a counter user with uh, two grass Pokemon in the back, but those grass are also weak to uh, fighting, right? So half steel, half rock, both weak to fighting. So that's why that this team was put together. Uh, plus, there were so many waters. I just at this thing, at this time I was hunting for all the water Pokemon. So you have two grass Pokemon for water. Obviously, you're very weak to fire in um, Escav and Fairthorn. You'd be neutral to it on um, Cradilly. I am slowly burning time with how I'm talking because I am going to look up whether there is actually any fire in this meta. Make her go at 68 ranked. So there, there is fire users. Uh, make her go at 68. Again, why is it ranked 68? Because this meta has 15 waters in the top 20. So that's why it is so low ranked. Uh, so you can get away with this double weakness to fire because the, the chances of you seeing a fire are probably pretty rare. Um, Azu double weak to fighting. So this one is basically Fairthorn or Lucario as your safe swap. You can use kind of either. Um, try to draw out a fighter and then Azumarill will beat that, beat that being half fairy. 
and then your other one will roam free. So it's just in sort of, again, I say it's an ABB style team. It's not a pure ABB because you can also draw out a ground type Pokemon with Lucario that would only do neutral against uh, Ferrothorn. You're both weak to fire, but again, there's not really a lot of fire in this meta you need to deal with. Okay, so let's get to some other Pokemon that I think had play in this meta. Uh, Whiskash, again, I've already covered... I covered Quagsire and I covered all three in the in Swampert already on team one. Uh, the Mud Boys are just strong. Note that it still had Blizzard at the time. Um, which honestly, you probably don't need Scald as much. So going Mud Bomb and Blizzard for Flyers and Grass, maybe actually probably better, quite honestly. You may actually want the Blizzard on the Whiskash. You can go either way, but going Mud Bomb, Blizzard may actually have more play than Scald. Um, and then Walrein, um, again, it's one of those Pokemon where gives you, if you're going to run Escav as a counter user for the steel, you're going to have problems with flyers. Not that there's a ton of them, but there's some of them. So, um, you at least do neutral to the flyers. I'm thinking this like, uh, Pelipper and stuff. You'll, you do neutral with Walrein and Walrein's bulky and spammy. And then you have that earthquake for steals as well. All right. Background change. Uh, okay, so this is very similar to a team that I already showcased. Yeah, I already showcased basically the same team. Where was it? Number two or three? Yeah. Um, so I went counter user double grass here, and they are going fire fang mawel double grass. Uh, same sort of concept though. If you if you're gonna see so many water Pokemon, you might as well try to deal with the water Pokemon. So that's essentially why these double teams work. Um. This is basically team number one, right? Pelipper with Quagsire. Last time I had Swampert, you just cover the core weakness, and then you have a fighter in the back. I had Lucario on team one. I put in Lucario and then Escav. Uh, you can put in use either. So I'm gonna breeze through these, and you're starting to you're starting to see. This is why I started every video started with. There's only 10 to 15 Pokemon that are relevant, and we're finding them very very quickly here. Uh, Lucario, Ferrothorn, and Jelsin, ABA weak to fighting, but Jelsin as your ghost, like I said, Jelsin's main role on this team and in uh, the Fossil Cup is to deal with those counter users. And then again, Ferrothorn, Quagsire, and then Glycopod. Glycopod is kind of an interesting one because you have um, just the spamminess of Claw and x -Scissor. And then liquidation again liquidation may not be as useful in this meta with all the water but it still has play and then the last one i just put a team together so i'm like polyrath i don't have a polyrath team yet because polyrath just got counter so i put it in like what do you do what do you not do um not surprising you're going to lose to lantern electric jelson as the ghost pelipper as the flyer so have some of those have some answers for those um so again for a lot of those having Registeel with the Zap Cannon or Ferrothorn as the Grass will be pretty good answers there. Uh, so that is it. If you, you can kind of see some of the other more unique Pokemon there, there's an Electric and Magnezone. If you're seeing a lot of Grass, Magnezone works. Again, you got to offset with how many Ferrothorns and Counter Users and Mud Boys you are seeing because that's why that might not be as strong. Um, Sandslash, same thing. You got some draw run coverage for steals and flyers there. Uh, Skarmory. Skarmory is a little more tricky, right? With steals. If you're steals, you're super re resisted across the board. And then steel wings resisted by water. So I don't know how relevant Skarmory is going to be in this meta. So what do I think is going to be relevant? It'll be interesting to see how many people have Kartana below 1500. I honestly have no idea if I have one below 1500, if I even did that, um, if I did that t uh, task. So I'm going to have to check. But guaranteed, I can just get, oh, let me just guarantee you 10 Pokemon that will be everywhere. Polyrath, Registeel, Ferrothorn, Jellicent, Escav, Lucario, a Mud Boy, Pick Your Picket, Swampert, Quagsire, or... Um, Whizcash will be everywhere. I think Cradilly as your other grass will be everywhere. Um, Mantine. <sighs> I could see Mantine being everywhere. Mantine's kind of a tricky one because I know as a flyer, there's a lot of resistances out there with the rock and steel. 
but you know you only take neutral from grass you can hit super effective with against just pure grass there you'll deal with the counter user so i think mantine may have mantine pelipper have i gone over pelipper yet mantine pelipper yeah they're kind of going to be in the same boat there um and then you'll get maybe some one-offs like sand slash and galisopod um and then maybe like magnezone and if you if you're seeing just a lot of water pokemon that aren't um like mud boys then you'll see you'll start seeing more magnezones and like togujimarus and stuff but that's it that's the meta um so 10 pokemon there 10 to 12 pokemon that i just mentioned that will be the meta for fossil cup it is also ultra league so and there was also like four weeks left already this season i can't believe how fast this summer's <laughs> i don't even care about the gbl season i can't believe how fast summer's going that it is august already that is crazy um yeah so sorry i was just th- i was just going like it's august already so it actually was my birthday yesterday <laughs> going through the midlife crisis so i'm a- yeah okay let's just end the video and then we'll do our little talk at the ending here so that that is it uh if you want to check out some ultra league teams i'll post that this afternoon and then um i feel like we're going to combo ultra league and this this week again it, this is the only great league on but there's like 10 pokemon so it's going to get uh pretty fast like uh boring pretty fast but people don't have ultra league pokemon so it's we'll have to work it out there so that is it um yeah in terms of life so two things first of all it's august and i feel like this summer is just going by faster and i think it's going by faster for two reasons one is that my daughter was in kindergarten for the first time this year so where previous sort of summers in canada is nice in june and my wife took advantage of that with the kids going to the cottage in june i was still working but at least i had that time to like maybe go golfing at night in june so I feel like I lost like a month of the summer. So I'm truly on that kid summer schedule, which is July and August. So I only have like two months of summer to jo- enjoy. And then every single weekend, 10 weekends straight from the last weekend of June through the first weekend of September, I had something every single weekend. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of fun stuff in there. Like I went to New York Go Fest. Um, there's like cottage weekends. Um but then there's a lot of just like one weekend her cousin came to stay with us. My parents are coming to stay with us. Uh, what week is this? Next week. My parents are coming to stay with me next weekend. Uh, we're going to go see her undergrad friends for a weekend trip the following weekend. So just like a lot of us, like every weekend has plans. So it's between like working five days a week, pumping out 14 videos a week, and all these weekends booked. This summer has just like... How, how are we August already? <laughs> and yeah, my birthday was yesterday. I turned 37. Um, again, I'm an older generation of Pokemon. Not, not, it's, I'm not even older generation, but I'm sort of the older generation. Like, like if you see all these like Twitch streamers and YouTube content creators, they're all generally five, 10 years younger than me and very behind, not behind, um, but just not where I am right now with, with like the kids and full-time jobs. They're like, kind of more like, school or graduating or just have partners but no kids yet and stuff like that so it's different times so i've I've gone through not a midlife crisis because but like man i'm on the wrong side of 30 37 very close to 40 it hits you weird and i had to get this is again just very very off uh (laughs) topic here they harrison ford who's like 80 now he was promoting his most recent Indiana Jones movie. Um, and he's he's on like Jimmy Fallon or something or Kimmel. And they showed a picture of him in the movie. And so they had to like CGI him. So he like they CGI'd his face to make him look younger. So they showed a picture of him like to himself. Like, hey, look at your CGI younger. Like, how does, how does that feel? He's like, that's what I still see myself as. I still see myself as this like. 40 to 50 year old guy even though i'm like 80 now and i had that like same realization about a couple months ago because i'm I'm taking the bus to work and like three or four gotta be like young 20 like high teens young 20 year olds get off to go to college so in college can in canada you're between the ages of like 18 and 22 so there's like three to four of them 
getting off the bus in their like late teens, early 20s. And I got thinking to myself, I don't see myself as a 20 year old anymore, but I don't see myself as a 37 year old. I still feel myself like, yeah, I'm still young. I'm relatable to these kids. But I'm like, I wonder what these kids look at me and see. So I asked my wife, I'm like, do you ever think like what these kids see when they like look at us? And she's like, probably just like a middle-aged man. I'm just like, oh no, (laughs) I am a middle-aged man. This is brutal. Um, So yeah, it's kind of a, kind of like a midlife crisis from that perspective of like, oh yeah, time is going very fast. Anyways, that is it. That was a lot of just random talk at the ending here, but that is Fossil Cup. Um, Thanks for watching. Good luck. Uh, Let me know if you have like any team ideas that I may have missed. Uh, If not, I'll see you guys in the next one.